today we're reviewing I'm well iPhoto for iPhone, which just came out today. Uh, it's got this great album interface. You can kind of scroll through all your albums you you've uh, created, and you can create more. It syncs to your library, so you've got your camera roll, photo stream. Uh, in my case, I've got cars, food, other interesting things. Uh, and then you can go through to, just to the individual photos themselves, and they're actually in their shapes. Or you can uh, view them by event, which you can sync from your iPhoto library, basically on your Mac, which is pretty great. Now you've also got your journals, which allows you to tell a story by creating something with the photos that you have. And then you can wirelessly beam them to different devices, include the location, look up locations, which I'm just going to turn on for the minute, for about a minute, and you can mirror it on your TV so you can kind of play around with it there. So let's get into it. Cars. Alright, so this is a pretty sweet shot. I've got a Lamborghini, so you've got all my car shots here. And then I can go ahead and share it, beam it, journal, email, print, slideshow, camera roll, iTunes, Flickr, Twitter, and Facebook. Some very nice sharing options. But I'm not going to share it. I'm going to look at the info. Just, It's got the f-stops, the uh, ISO. It's very full-featured resolution. And then it's also got a map of where it was taken. Uh, just some comments if you want to share it to Flickr or Facebook. You can put comments down there. And then you can caption it, which is great. For, it's kind of like uh, Adobe Bridge. It allows you to really mark up what your photos are going to be. But then it's also got this great line editor. So we're going to go ahead and edit it just to show you. It's a fantastic feature set. So you can, and this, without changing anything on the photo, you can always revert back. You can scale it up or down and just adjust with the, uh, We'll just, this is how easy it is to uh, center it. So we're going to do that. And we're done. We cropped it, we adjusted it that easy. This is kind of the auto settings. Still playing around with it. Auto exposure. Just correcting everything here. Now we're going to leave those settings, turn that off copy exposure. I like that because you can paste it from one photo to the other. And we're going to go into the, well I believe what is, well to tell you the truth I'm still figuring it out myself. Yeah so you can adjust everything here. I believe this is, uh, what is this? Saturation. So I'm just playing around. You literally just go uh, up or down to enhance it and it looks pretty great I have to say and then this is red eye I believe but we don't have any people in this shot so then you've got white balance completely adjustable you've got a bunch of perfectly uh, set options or you can do it based on skin tone or a white part that you select in the photo I like the skin tone setting which I'll show you in a second and you can preserve the skin tones no matter how you change the photo now, out of the color settings, you've also got these brushes. Now, the brushes are probably one of the most fantastic features that are included. Let's try the repair tool. Just to show you what soften is, that's just soften the focus. So we can... And then you can also uh, sharpen it which makes it clearer but also sometimes pixelates it. Uh, you can lighten it, darken it, desaturate, saturate, red eye, and this is all on a spot so you can do it in a certain location in the photo and repair. So let's try desaturation. As I said, I just got this app. But there you can see where we blurred it a little bit here now this is auto enhanced just 
another feature, and then we'll get back to the brushes. So this is nice because it really brings out the colors well. Rotation, flagging, which allows you to make easier albums. Uh, just saying you like it. And back to the editing. Alright. So let's try brushes again. Alright. We are going to repair it. Let's see what this does. So we just brushed where we wanted, and let's see what happens. And it changes it. Uh, not my favorite repair, I have to say, but yeah. Let's see if we can go back on that. Back. All right. Responsiveness can use some work. One sec. back and you can also do this uh, horizontally or just lengthwise so we're gonna go back to editing brushes find a brush we like better so I don't know really what the repair do tool does it doesn't really do much for me I have to say kinda ruin the photo but we'll fix that later after this video uh, but the other brushes should work well I'm wondering if there's a variation in brush size. I haven't really explored that much, but let's just try lighten maybe, just to brighten this photo up. So we're going to select these plants. Oh, this isn't working because you can't see it. <laughs> Sorry. Alright. So the brushes really aren't responsive when your phone's kind of slowing down. So, got interrupted there. Just a side note, you do need iOS 5.1 to run this. Which all iPhone 4s and iPhone 4s's and other iDevices, most of them should be able to run. This is just enhancement uh, effects. So it's got this nice little band of effects, vintage, aura, black and white, dub tone, and warm and cool. So let's try vintage. Alright, not doing uh, too much. It looks nice, but just to show you really what it does, let's do dub tone. We're going to go black and white because this really isn't working. And if it doesn't work, then you're on your own. I don't know why the, the effect really got deactivated there, but we're going to do black and white. Ah, here we are. Now it's adjusting. Oh, the effect is adjustable. So, you set it up from here, it appears. And you can kind of customize the hue, which is kind of cool. Let's just check out all the effects. Dub tone. We're going to undo black and white. You can just adjust all the tones, which is kind of cool. 
And I'm doing it by selection, so just a certain area now. Warm and cool. Vintage. You can't see it's really changing, it's just... There we are. See? Now the colors are kind of screwed up on this video, so I'm sorry about that. Working on it, but... Yeah, the effects really do do some cool stuff. So... We're just going to get rid of that effect. And we're going to move on. Let's make a photo book. Or a journal. So you go to albums. I'm going gonna, gonna to go back into my cars album. Share and hmm. I don't see oh journal is by individual picture, so I'm just gonna back cars. Well you're exploring with me, so we're all exploring here. Oh, I missed it. So, journal is here. Uh, we're going to choose all three, just for the sake of time. We're going to name the journal cars. And, yep, yeah, return. And we there are different journal styles. So, there's cotton, border, uh, light, I like dark and mosaic. I think we're gonna go with mosaic. And then just it makes it automatically. You can edit it too. And you can I guess we'll edit it a little bit. Give me a second. You can scale up the pictures and move them. You can add a header, text, note, memory, space, page, map, day, quote, food, and weather, which is pretty cool. And the weather, it can be uh, actually determined just based on the location and the day. It pinpoints what the weather was, which is pretty insane. And this is from a while back, actually, this photo. So, yeah, it just pinpoints it right there and then. And then you can scale the pictures up, add a caption. I'm just going to move this picture here. And I'm going to move that picture there. And move the weather, if I can, because I'm new at this, to the middle. And there we are. We have our photo book, Cars. And then also there's sharing options, I believe. I'm not really sure how yet, so that's today's review of photo or whatever iPhoto. Thanks for watching. It's four ninety nine in the App Store. Uh, it's for iPad, although pro you probably only want it for iPad too. You can get that too. And iPhone. Enjoy.